Okay, I hope you have a positive report for us today. <laughs> um, uh, there's a few, uh, few optimistic tidbits here and there. Um, so I'll, I'll try and keep this brief. I know there's a lot of, lot of important stuff to discuss today. Thank you, Speaker and Peter, for giving me the opportunity to update the committee. Um, for those of you who, who either don't follow or don't have time to keep up with uh, all the stuff that's coming out, we, we released three blogs last week. Uh, one of them I described on Monday was the uh, describing the survey we did with the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. Uh, then there was a, a blog by Frank Haas and James Mack uh, that I think really talks about a, an opportunity that we have to rebuild and remake tourism uh, and make Hawaii a smart destination. So we really take advantage of technology to, to manage over tourism, to to manage tourism period, and, and also to, to uh, help collect the cost uh, that tourists can, can bring to bear on some of our destinations. So that's, and that, that's part of the Hawaii Tourism Authority strategic plan. So it, I think we have a real opportunity uh, and a need to, to use technology to, uh, to manage the destination. The, then the third blog last week was about the, the sort of current and, and coming crisis in, in uh, the rental market and in people's inability to cover rents. That's by Phil Garboden, the HCRC uh, chair in affordable housing for Hawaii. And uh, so I, those are highly recommended. Today, we're going to be releasing another blog that really gets at um, a set of potential scenarios for Hawaii's recovery. And these are, these are really scenarios that are based on assumptions that we're, we're releasing this so that we can continue to gather feedback. We've received a lot of feedback, uh, some from members of this committee, uh, from, uh, from businesses. The, in our baseline, the maintained assumption, and some of you saw drafts of this last week, um, the maintained assumption in the baseline is that we continue to reopen the local economy in the month of May. It's a gradual process. It starts off with um, activity returning to a, about 35, regaining about 35 to 45% of the lost activity that we saw during the, the most severe part of the, the stay at home order in April. And so the begins very slowly and builds over time as uh, consumer activity increases and as we begin to get some tourism back later in the year. Uh, by the end of the year, we anticipate the local economy uh, having regained about 75% of the lost activity. We, you know, we don't get back to normal uh, for a whole variety of reasons from overall weakness in the macro economy, right? A sustained high level of unemployment, um, increased costs associated with businesses trying to deal with social distancing, and of course, spillover effects from, from uh, persistently weak tourism. The, the opening of the tourism economy is, is even more uncertain than, than the local economy. And in our baseline, we're assuming that um, we'll continue to see progress in, in screening, testing, um, and tracking visitors. And in particular, you know, we're going to have to do better than we are right now. Um, with the visitors that are arriving, uh, and we anticipate that, that that will happen. And so we're, we're assuming that by the end of July, we'll begin to reopen some to tourism. So remember, this is an assumption, and you know, if you don't like it, then use our pessimistic assumption, which assumes a much later reopening. Um, the, specifically, we, we assume that by the third quarter, visitor arrivals will have recovered. So this is the um, July, August, September period, the visitor arrivals, and this is mostly August, September, because we don't, we don't anticipate reopening at all until the very end of July, um, recovering to about 28% of their previous peak level. Uh, and then capacity will gradually ramp up, back up to about half uh, by December. Uh, so that, you know, that will be either optimistic or pessimistic, depending on how the pandemic plays out, depending on our testing capability, and our ability to ramp up uh, contact tracing and managing the risk of reopening, uh, reopening tourism gradually. So, Speaker, am I able to share my screen? Yes, I'll, absolutely. I'll just try it. Um, so, this is the result that we get in 
combining the reopening of the local economy and the tourism economy. So the, the gold arrow uh, is the loss of jobs. Uh, and by our estimate, we lo we've lost already about 220,000 jobs in, uh, in March and April. Um, the impact of the PPP loans, it's not just SBA, it's also the, the uh, payroll support loans to airlines, only reverses about uh, 80,000 of those at, at of those 220,000 job loss. And that's an assumption about how many of these jobs were already uh, were already laid off versus how many um, how many of these loans are supporting workers who, who were never laid off. Uh, and then you'll notice the first dark blue arrow. Now we can see, uh, so in July, the recovery of, of jobs uh, is lower than it was with the PPP loans. And the reason for that is that the PPP loans, this is what Peter was just asking about, when the PPP loans uh, run out uh, at the end of June, the, by our assumptions, the local economy and the tourism economy will not have uh, provided enough new job support to uh, prevent us from having a, a, a return to uh, additional layoffs. Uh, by the end of the year, all the way out in December, we regained a, uh, almost half of the jobs that were, were, were lost during the downturn, actually a little bit more. So uh, we're down 100,000 100, jobs by the end of the year. And so, I mean, the optimistic part about this is that we are envisioning recovery um, or our scenarios are, are assuming recovery um, the pessimistic part is that by the end of the fourth quarter, uh, or by, by the fourth quarter, uh, you still have double-digit unemployment. And so the, looking at the different scenarios in the blog sort of illustrates the importance of getting the economy reopened for, for dealing with the immense social and health costs associated with uh, long-term widespread unemployment. Um, so that's, that's what I have on the economy. I have a couple of quick comments, if I, if I can, about uh, our communication strategy and you know, getting the message out to the public in a transparent way and using metrics to, to sort of uh, inform the public of, of what's happening because the, the, the reopening of both the local and the tourism economy are going to require a, a tremendous amount of, of buy-in on the part of, of Hawaii citizens and so this morning I visited the DOH website, Department of Health website, and uh, I was really happy to see a, a new page, at least new to me. Uh, it may be that it was up there already and I just missed it, but there's a page called What is DOH Doing or What is Department of Health Doing? And uh, one of the metrics that's included on that page now is the size of our investigation team. And I hadn't seen that before. Um, it's an important metric for knowing, you know, knowing what we're capable of doing in contact tracing. Uh, and I think it would be great to, to also include a metric on how long it takes us. So once we have identified a, a presumed positive or a tested positive, how long does it take us to, uh, to reach all of the contacts and to isolate ones that have had close contact? Um, and, and what is our capacity for isolating and, and quarantining uh, people, particularly when they don't have the ability to to quarantine at home. And, you know, this is going to be crucial. These are crucial metrics that will be driving our decisions about reopening and, and our capacity to reopen. Um, and so it seems like having a target for how big the size of our, of our uh, contact tracing, our investigation team is, uh, would be, would be helpful. And there are some uh, there are some targets that have been provided. For example, the National Association of County and City Health Officials have recommended uh, 30 per 100,000 population, and so we're, obviously we're not we're not anywhere near that. And uh, it may be that there are other other metrics that Department of Health could provide. Um, and so this is part of communicating to the public that uh, you know we're we're prepared and we're doing doing what we need to in order to begin the reopening process. Mahalo.